This is a coil and plug assembly from a SX4. It's a three wire system. I've showed you guys this before. Those, those have seen the, some, some of the stuff on the channel in the past. And uh, simple, straightforward, you know, uh, 12 volt supply, a ground, and a trigger. Straightforward. Uh, however, Toyota saw fit to make things um, a wee bit more complicated, you know. Um, they actually have a, a four wire system. So just in general terms, what is the four wire system all about, right? So there is a 12 volt supply, there's a ground, and there's a trigger, just the same way as on the four wire, on the uh, three wire uh, coil on plugs. But there is a fourth line. So what is that fourth line? So here on the drawing here, guys, you can see they're all the same. All the coils, it's a four cylinder engine in my case here that we're looking at on the Prius C. And um, you can see we have the uh, 12 volt supply, we have the ground, we have IGT4, this is for uh, cylinder four in this case. They're all numbered individually with the respective cylinders. But that's the trigger. So those are the ones we're used to, you know, the supply, the ground, and the trigger. And there's IG for ignition F. So what this is basically, guys, is a feedback mechanism. So the system has the wherewithal to actually uh, confirm that the ignition has actually taken place, you know. Uh, so Toyota has added another level of sophistication, and this is not new, by the way. This has been around for years, but it's new to me. Um, they've added another level of sophistication with respect to their monitoring. Uh, they don't just look at the uh, anomaly in the crankshaft sensor rotation for a misfire, but they can actually pick up an ignition mis misfire from the feedback here from the IGF ignition feedback, right? So let's just take a look at um, the four... Uh, lines that come into the uh, coil on plug assembly and we'll see if we can make sense of them on the scope so on the connector here guys it's a wee bit easier to make sense of it if you look at the two uh, outboard positions uh, we have the ground we have the 12 volt supply we know the yellow is the feedback which leaves the, the fourth line here the ignition trigger IGT IGF ground and 12 volts. The light green line, which is the 12 volts, so you can see here where I've got the trigger set when I turn the ignition on. It actually came up 14.7 uh, volts. Here I'm actually probed on the ground line at the ignition uh, here, guys. Of course, uh, zero volts doesn't mean a great deal to you, right? So let me just swap the ground here from ground proper to convert to positive ground here, just at the jump point inside the uh, fuse box. And you can see here I have 14, minus 14 volts now. If that was floating, of course, it would have remained at zero. So it's a good ground. Let's check the other lines. Of course, the, the engine uh, will have to be running in order for us to get any ignition pulses. So this time, just probing the green wire, guys. If you recall, that's the uh, trigger. And there's the trigger on the scope here. Uh, you'll notice I've changed the time base just so we can see actually two occurrences. So this is the plug actually firing twice, some uh, what, 100 milliseconds apart-ish or so, right? See I've got the time base at 200 millivolt, milliseconds and uh, 5 volt time base there. So I have the trigger in auto, that's why it's disappeared. So let me swap over the wire here and we'll actually uh, take, a look at the, uh, take a look at the feedback. And then we'll get the two channels on the go. We'll take a look at the trigger and the feedback uh, on the same uh, on this, at the same time. You can see here, guys, we've got two channels on the go. Again, the uh, channel one, the yellow trace, is the, uh, the trigger, and uh, channel two, the green trace, is the actual uh, feedback. So you can see, it's uh, they're basically operating uh, in opposite with opposite with respect to uh, duty cycle right the width of the pulse on the trigger is pretty much inverse from the by the, uh, the feedback I suspect that's the strategy they use for confirmation of the trigger itself you can see uh, a couple of pips in between here which I suspect is noise from the other cylinders I think it's uh, one three uh, four two in the firing order if I'm not mistaken I don't know that for a fact but I think that's the firing order I should have mentioned that the uh, ignition feedback, the IGF line, 
um, comes off each coil assembly as a single wire, but all those wires actually go to a common splice point. So it makes its way back to the engine control module itself as a single wire. So what you're seeing here on channel two, the green trace, is the feedback from uh, the other three coils, not just um, coil three. So we have the two pulses, uh, the trigger pulses from coil three, channel one in yellow, but it's the feedback from all the coils that you're looking at on channel two. That's why there's multiple interruptions to the pulse train and it doesn't match channel one. Okay, so again, so here is uh, both traces are actually at the, uh, the 10 volts uh, setting here, guys. So they're both basically 5 volt um, um, references. 5 volt gets pulled to ground again on the feedback, and the pulse comes up to the 5 volt and down to the ground to, in order to trigger. So you can see here uh, how the lines are acting in a kind of an inverse manner, but they're not directly inversely proportional. You can see the... Uh, the duty cycle is not quite inverse. You can see, um, I could have pulled that up actually, but it doesn't really matter. You get, you get an appreciation for what it looks like. So long as the pulse transpires, so long as the ignition is on the go, um, this is what your, uh, your feedback line should look like without getting any too much depth. That's, that's good enough. I think we'll wrap up just by taking a look at the, uh, the secondary trace. We'll see if we can pull the uh, trace off the top of the coil. With the engine running here, guys. Let me see if it's got the scaling a wee bit better here. Maybe that's still there. Okay, you can get a good look. So here's the uh, trace from just the just the light, the lead actually sitting on top of the coil, guys. It's well capable of uh, picking, inducing a, a signal in in the line. Again, it's a one voltage. One volt uh, is on the uh, the uh, amplitude and uh, 10 milliseconds on the uh, time base. So if we were to superimpose the trigger on here, what would we actually see? We'd see the trigger actually sitting right here, right? So the, when the leading edge of the trigger, the, it tells the coil to turn on, the coil actually starts to charge, and the trailing edge of the trigger is when the, the, uh, is the turn off signal for the primary. So the uh, field actually collapses, inducing the high voltage spike here. And then of course we have uh, um, so this is the spark line, sorry, the firing line, the spark line, and then the oscillations as the, uh, as the voltage collapses in the secondary, of course, it induces back in and then you get the ringing effect here until it dissipates all the energy. So again, coil charging, the actual spark, the firing line, the spark line, or the burn time if you prefer, from here to here and then the residual energy just dissipating in the coil as it rings back and forth. Right, I think we'll call that good there, guys. So that's the, again, the intention of the video was just to show you the, uh, um, the four wire system as opposed to the three. Uh, I know I never spent much time talking about the feedback signal itself. Just an introduction to the four wire coil. I hope that made some sense. That's it, boys. Cheers.